Hello and welcome. Today we are going to make a stuffed braided bread using our easy dough recipe and you're going to love it. I'm going to fill it with Italian meats and cheeses, but you can fill this with anything that you can think of. Even Nutella works great here. The ingredients are quite straightforward in this and I'm going to give you a bit of leeway with the meats. You can go up to as far as eight ounces total or as low as four ounces. Now you don't want to go any more than eight ounces because it will affect the bread and the baking time. For the cheeses, you can go up to four ounces total, but don't go above that because it just seeps out onto your baking tray and it can make a mess and smoke in your oven. So you don't want that either. Other than that, the ingredients are pretty straightforward. You wanna use two tablespoons of butter or 28 grams. Instead of butter, you can use vegetable oil spread or margarine. They both work great as a substitute. To that, you wanna add in two tablespoons of oil, 30 milliliters, and you can use any type of cooking oil you like. To this, we're gonna add in just two tablespoons of sugar, that's 25 grams, it's gonna give a hint of sweetness. If you wanna cut that back a little bit, you can just leave at least one teaspoon's worth. That's about three grams or so, because you do want it to aid in browning and just keep the bread a little bit on the softer side. To this, we're gonna add in one and a half teaspoons of yeast. I'm using instant dry yeast, that's 4.5 grams. You can use active dry yeast, but you do have to activate it first. And for a little bit of flavoring and structure, we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt, 2.5 grams. I don't recommend going up in the salt because the pepperoni and salami is very salty, as is the cheese. Now we wanna add in three quarters a cup of milk, 180 milliliters. And we want to warm that milk slightly to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit, 43 degrees Celsius. That's lukewarm. It should not be hot to the touch. Finally, we're going to add in flour. I'm using two cups of flour. Now, when I weigh out flour, a cup of flour always weighs out 150 grams for me. So a total of 300 grams if you're using grams. And then using a spoon, or how about we just use our hands today? We're going to mix this until it forms a shaggy dough. This is such a lovely dough to work with. It should start pulling away from the sides pretty cleanly as you mix it together with your hands. Once you got it into a shaggy ball, you are going to put it onto your work surface and you're going to begin to knead it eight to 10 minutes or until it stretches easily without tearing. Now, if you wanna use a stand mixer, that is perfectly fine. Just dump all the ingredients in and let it mix eight to 12 minutes or until again, it stretches easily without tearing. See how this dough comes away cleanly from the bowl, but it's quite sticky to your hands. Don't worry, it will be less sticky as you work it. Do not be tempted to add in flour. At least give it five minutes before you add any flour. That flour will begin to absorb all that liquid and if you add flour, you're gonna make it a tough dough with a real closed crumb, which doesn't taste very pleasant. But it will stick to your hands in the process as you are kneading. Sticky dough is not a bad thing. Now the butter, margarine, or vegetable oil spread, whatever you chose, may start to seep out onto your work surface. Don't worry because as you knead the dough, it will pick up all that oil and fat. After kneading it, it's now stretching really easy and it is not tearing without a lot of pressure. You're gonna cover this and let it rise until it doubles in size. Now this is temperature dependent and it can take anywhere from 20 minutes to two hours. Typically for me, it's about an hour to an hour and a half. And our temperature fluctuates between 72 to 74 on average, which is about 22, 23 degrees Celsius. Once your dough has risen double in size, it should look like this. When you press onto it, it should hold the indents and slowly bounce back, but not immediately bounce back and it shouldn't collapse entirely. We are now ready to work with the dough. Put it out onto a clean work surface and start to press it into a rectangular or square shape. This will just help you roll it out better. Now, if you don't have a rolling pin, you can pat this out by hand. It's just gonna take you quite a long time. As you begin to roll this, the dough may want to bounce back on you, and that is perfectly fine if it does. Let it relax a little bit and continue to roll it. That is perfectly normal for this. We want a rectangle that's nine by 15 inches. That's about 23 by 38 centimeters. Once you have the dough rolled out into your rectangle, you now wanna cut some strips along the edges. And you wanna cut 15 strips on each side total. That means you're going to cut a strip every one inch or about 2.5 centimeters. Each strip is going to be approximately three inches long by one inch wide. That is 7.62 centimeters by 2.5 centimeters. You now have 15 strips total. We are going to move the top and bottom strips and this will help us braid the bread later. You're going to end up with 13 strips remaining on each side. With the strips that you are removing, don't discard it as so many recipes tell you. Anytime a recipe tells you to discard dough, don't do it. You can roll it up and make a roll and eat it the next day even. 
Don't waste food if you don't have to. In no particular order, we're going to place down our meats and cheeses. We are going to start out with two ounces of pepperoni. You can go up to four ounces, though. That's 56 to 113 grams. You want to try to space them out equally as best as you can. And don't worry if you have to pick them up and rearrange them a few times. You'll see me do this here. To that, I'm going to add on two ounces of sliced provolone, 56 grams. Next, I'm going to put on some shredded mozzarella. You could use sliced mozzarella as well. Two ounces, 56 grams. You may be tempted to use more cheese, but I don't recommend it because it will ooze out and it will make a mess on your baking tray. And finally, I'm going to add on some salami. Two ounces, four ounces, whichever one you prefer, 56 to 113 grams. Now, in this particular recipe, I'm only using two ounces each, but you can easily double it without messing up the baking time or the texture of the bread. If you go beyond that, that's when you start to have some issues. Fold in the center tabs of dough. Now, beginning on the left side, pick up the first strip of dough and gently bring it across the filling diagonally. Repeat this process on the opposite side so the two strips crisscross each other. Continue down the length of the dough, alternating strips to form the braid. I'm going to let you see the braid entirely so that way you can really get a concept of what I'm doing. It's not difficult at all, but it looks very complicated at the end and it shows really pretty. As you can see, I'm just crisscrossing the strips of dough and I'm just angling them slightly so that they're a little bit diagonal. And it just creates this nice little braided pattern. Once you have braided the dough, put it on your baking sheet and cover it. You wanna let this rest 30 to 60 minutes or until it's about double in size or puffed up really nicely. Once about 40 minutes has passed, I like to go ahead and preheat my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. Then I'm going to remove the cover and bake it 18 to 24 minutes or until it's a nice golden brown. Ideally, the center of the bread should reach 190 degrees Fahrenheit or 88 degrees Celsius. Now, when this first comes out of the oven, you want to let it sit for a good 5 to 10 minutes before you touch it. The grease from the meats and the cheeses is very piping hot. You will get burned. It has been 10 minutes. Let's cut into this and see what it looks like. Say hello to Maggie and Raymond, everybody. They can't eat this and they're not very pleased with me, but it's way too high in fat and sodium. It's probably not even good for us if you think about it, but we're not gonna think about that. Watch this cheese just really stretch. It's amazing to bite into this and it's so fun to eat. Now look at how the grease from the pepperoni and salami has seeped into the bread and it just gives this extra layer of flavor that you just really appreciate if you are into Italian meat and cheeses. Tell me, are you going to try it just like this or are you going to try something else like ham and cheese? Let me know in the comments, you guys. In the meantime, let's say hi to Raymond that's hiding in the background hoping I will drop some of this, which I'm being very careful not to because it really isn't good for your pets. Let's do some troubleshootings. Let's say, for instance, you made one with 14 strips on one side and 12 on the other. Surely nobody does that, right? As you can see, I screwed up the first time I filmed this. It's okay though, because I find this to be a teachable moment. I don't know what I was thinking. I was just in my own little world. Am I gonna give up and start over? Absolutely not. All you have to do is pick up your strips and start folding them over and unfolding them to see how it looks. And you can get it to look really nice if you just manipulate it a little bit. And no one's gonna tell you, oh my gosh, you used too many strips. See how pretty it still looks? So don't worry if that happens. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Thank you for watching and as always, happy baking.